lies. It's Shark Week 2019. Hi everyone, my name is Natalie, also known as Nitty Natty. Welcome to your survival guide for Sock Week 2019. This is a make-along to challenge yourself to knit or crochet a single adult sock in just eight days. I've chronicled my eight-day journey through this gorgeous sock with self-striping yarn from Malia Made It, and I've included my tips and tricks along the way. For more information regarding the rules, prizes, things like that, watch the intro video in the description box below or go to the Love and Stitches Ravelry page. Let's get started on our adventure. Tomorrow is the big day, sock week, so it's time to get prepared. I'm gathering up all of my supplies. I've got my sock yarn, my Chaigu US1 2.25 millimeter 32 inch needles, my progress keeper, and light bulb stitch markers. I've also brought my favorite scissors and my curved chibi tapestry needle for Kitchener stitch. Some things you might not want to be without for this journey are nourishment, hydration, and recreation. Let the journey begin. It's day one of sock week. It's gonna be a tough journey, eight days, one sock. I'm getting sort of a late start on day one, though I put my pajamas back on for you. And uh, even through illness, we must pursue this journey. So today's goals, <clears throat> it's day one. I'm starting my cuff down sock. Today I am going to cast on, here we go, and do my 20 rounds of the cuff. So here we go. My tip for you today, if you are doing the cuff down sock, is to cast on using long tail over two needles. This gives you an extra stretchy cast on. I am doing a 60 stitch sock, which is my standard this year. And I'm going to do a two by two ribbing for my cuff. Just finished my cast on and then I did just two rows or two rounds of two by two ribbing and that's all I'm gonna do until after my quote-unquote work hours um, just to be fair to everyone who is working this summer and I think this only took me like 15 minutes um, maybe 20 but definitely the cast on and those first few rows are a whole lot slower so I like to get them out of the way and then this evening I will only have 18 more rounds to go and I think we're going to be driving around catching Pokemon so maybe I can get a few more done at that time. I'm all done with day one. My 20 rounds of the cuff. Um, I totally forgot to bring the sock with me when we were driving around. And given that I started really late today, I still finished it well before bedtime. Um, we started a show, like an hour long show, and then I did about 20 minutes of editing. So I'd say all in all, these 20 rounds took me like just under two hours today. So I feel like that's really, really achievable. 
um, for the rest of the time. So yeah, tomorrow's a new day. It's already started and I'm saying good night and I will see you on day two. Oof. Good morning. It's day two. I'm feeling pretty good about day two because all I have to do is stockinette stitch. So I got my cuff done yesterday, day one. And today my goal is to get through half of my leg and I'm just doing a medium length leg. So it'll be 40 rounds total and half of that will just be 20 rounds today. And I'm gonna start using my light bulb stitch markers and I'll show you kind of how I use that to count my rounds here in just a little bit, but I'm gonna go get cleaned up and then at lunch I can start working on my leg. It's now lunchtime. I'm having my sandwich and hot and spicy Cheez-Its. And while I'm eating lunch, I'm going to be working on the stockinette part of my sock. My day two goal is to do 20 rounds of the leg. So I'm going to be putting in one of these light bulb stitch markers. Uh, um, once I start the first row, I'm gonna put the light bulb stitch marker on the last row of my cuff so I know where the cuff ended and then I know where to count 20 rounds. So I will show you that as soon as I get there. Also, I am going to be editing video while knitting on my sock while eating lunch. So um, I'll be using my phone for that. So I have to report back after I'm done, see how much I can get done in about 45 minutes with lots of distractions. I'm part of the way through my first row and I'm gonna put my little marker right there, that row below, because that was the last round of the cuff. And what's on my needle now is the first round of the leg. So there we go, that stitch is marked and I am off for 20 rounds of stockinette stitch. I had to take off my headband because I was hurting my head, but my 45 minute timer just went off. I finished my lunch, I finished editing my video, and I was kind of knitting here and there probably half of the time, maybe, very distracted. But still, I got 11 rounds done. So you can see my marker right there marking that, that's so blurry, marking the last round of the cuff. So then I just counted my V's up from there and then of course counted what was on the needle to know that I had 11 rounds. So I am just over halfway done today. I am putting this away until after my work time. I mean, I'm working, but it's not my day job. Um, but I'll probably take this along with me later. We have a hockey game. Well, I actually got almost all of it done on the ride in the car. Um, I only have a row and a half left to go. I'm on on the middle of row 19. So I think I'm just gonna leave it in the car and take my other project in to watch my husband play hockey. But I don't think I have anything else interesting to say today. So it's only like seven o'clock, but I'm just gonna go ahead and say good night and you will see me again tomorrow day three. Good morning. Happy day three. Definitely had a hard time getting up today, but gotta keep showing up for the journey. So today is the leg day two. So I'm going to do the second part of my leg. So I'm going to do another 20 rounds of stockinette. And once I get showered and awake with more coffee <laughs> and later at lunch i will put in another one of my light bulb stitch markers and i will start working on the next 20 rounds of my leg toaster he doesn't care so today's gotten a little busier than i imagined and during lunch i had to 
eat really fast, kind of discuss things with my husband about our upcoming trip, and then didn't get to knit. So, yikes. And now I need to work on something else while I am editing my podcast, but I will be bringing my socks with me later on this evening, so stay tuned. It's coming. So I'm all done for today. I got all of it finished on the car ride to the restaurant and then at the restaurant. We were probably there for like an hour maybe. So all in all, I'm probably in like an hour and a half today. But <laughs> um, I just wanted to share a little tip with you. I changed back out to uh, another light bulb stitch marker. So I have 20 rounds and 20 rounds, except I don't actually have 20 rounds. So when I'm using self-striping yarn and you're going cuff down, you actually have the luxury of stopping at the end of your stripe um, because you can rearrange your stitches from there and you still have a tube going. Um, I just don't wanna like start my heel when I have a few stitches of that previous stripe left. So kind of let me show you what I mean. So I actually ended up doing 20 and a half rounds. So I did 20 rounds and then I worked across this needle one last time, and I just happened to get to the color change right at the edge, but if I hadn't, let's say like I needed to go like 10 more stitches, sorry, like 10 more stitches here, I would have knit those 10 stitches until I got to the color change, and then that would be my new beginning of round, and I would split my stitches evenly. You can only do this on the cuff because of course, if you start toe up, like you can't change the orientation of your toe, but I really like doing that with self-striping yarn. So that's my little tip for you today. Tomorrow is day four and I will be moving on to the heel. I just did a you know medium length cuff. So I'm saying good night and I will see you on day four. Good morning, it is day four. I have a new coffee mug. I love it. So day four for me doing the cuff down sock is my heel. So I have pretty short like medium length leg and I'm about to put in my fish lips kiss heel today and I'm gonna do that with a contrasting color yarn that I also got from Malia Made It and I'm gonna be doing the Fish Lips Kiss heel. So while I can't show you very much of the heel because it's not mine, Toaster's trying to get a bug, I will show you a little tip I have for when you join back in the round after the heel um, when you're doing the Fish Lips Kiss heel. Actually, that tip might be tomorrow when I start on the foot, but we'll see. It's finally lunchtime. Today I have chicken and arugula <laughs> but I am going to be editing whoa sorry I'm going to be editing again during lunch while I'm sitting here eating and I'm going to start working on the heel of my sock so I'm doing the fish lips kiss heel like I said and I'm going to join in my contrast color and then once I'm ready to go back in the round I will kind of give you a little tip on fish lips kiss heel when you have a contrast color I do have a quick tip for you um, for joining in your contrast color. So I just like to make a loop and, you know, leave a tail and I just knit this first stitch. Um, when I go to the second stitch, I actually like to cross with my main color. So what I do, let's see if I can do it. I take the um, contrast color, you will need the ball, and I pull it underneath 
so that it crosses and picks up that main color. So now when I knit my second stitch, these two are going to cross and I'm going to pull it kind of tight. Do a couple more stitches. Okay, so that way they're just crossed and when I do start with this main color again, I'll pull on it. Um, it all stays a little loose right now because, you know, the tail's not anchored down, but that really helps me not have a gap here when I do the fish lips kiss heel. So I finished up my heel while I was out and about and I am right here on that last part where I've got two stitches, two twin stitches left. So I will show you how I deal with those tomorrow. So saying good night and I will see you on day five. Good morning. I cannot believe it's already day five. Um, I brought out my coolest mug today, which is color changing here, heat changing. So it'll be all changed in just a second because I feel like today, let me get this situated. Today is kind of like starting the slog of the foot, which since I made a short leg, the foot's gonna be the longest part of the sock for me. So um, I'm gonna show you later how I deal with those last two twin stitches from Fish Lips Kiss and change back into my main color. Um, but today my goal is to do 20 um, or maybe just like 21 or 22 rounds. So I'm going to do my foot over three days. So days five, six, and seven are all going to be foot. And the final day, day eight, will be my toe. I know that I need 65 rounds to make my foot. So just dividing that up close to even, it's going to be just over 20 rounds a day. So you are able to do that however you like, but that's how I'm going to do it. So I will see you later on today when I work on my foot. It is lunchtime now. I went and got my nails done today. Feels super nice. And I am going to be working on 20-ish, a little more than 20 rounds of the foot while I eat my lunch and edit things. Um, and I am about to show you just how I transition back into my main color. So in the fish lips kiss heel without giving too much away, there comes a time where you do one last twin stitch, slide it back, you turn around and you're ready to work your final round. And in the pattern, it wants you to continue using this color and it wants you to do all go all the way across and all the way across the top of your sock until you're back around. But if we do that with a contrast color, then we're gonna end up with a single stripe on the top of our sock in the contrast color, and that's just not gonna look good. So there's a couple ways to approach this, but first I'm gonna cut my contrast color because I am done with it. So I'm just gonna trim it and get rid of it. So there's two different things that we can do. Our main color is already over here in this corner. Let me see if I can get it so you can see. It's right here. It's already there. So there's two different things I can do. I could skip these two stitches and just start knitting with my main color here. That's super easy. But what I actually like to do is slide these twin stitches over here so I can go ahead and take care of them. So now I'm starting the first round of my foot and I'm going to knit these twin stitches together. And when I bring up my main color, it is crossing. It doesn't have to cross with that. All these tails are getting in the way. It's gonna kind of cinch things up. See, right down there right there it already crossed so I'm just gonna pull that 
pretty tight when I do the second stitch. So pull it up nice and snug so you don't get any holes. And then you can just carry on knitting the foot of your sock. Although it's not super necessary since I can clearly see the first round of my foot, I am gonna slide a marker in right here on the last round of the heel. done kind of took this thing around with me tonight and I got my 20 rounds for the first part of my foot all complete so I'm gonna say good night and I will see you tomorrow on day six good morning I cannot believe it's already day six and I just have a little bit more of my sock to do so today's goal is to continue knitting on the foot I'm going to do another 20 rounds or so, and then I'll still have one more day to work on my foot with the final day being the toe. Um, we're about to go to the movies soon, so I'm just going to put my marker in um, from the last 20 rounds and then go as far as I can in the movies. So we'll see um, how much knitting you can do during Spider-Man. Today went by pretty quickly with my sock since I took it to the movies early this morning, like 11. And I haven't stopped to count yet, but it looks like I have just a little over 20 rounds done, which is perfect because um, tomorrow I'm gonna be finishing up my foot and then on the last day I'll be doing the toe. So I'm saying good night and I'll see you tomorrow for day seven. Good morning, everyone. I cannot even believe we're already on day seven. It is just crazy. Um, it is a weekend, so this morning I'm going to be drinking my coffee out of my Poly Studios mug again. I love those mugs. And I'm going to be working on my sock first thing this morning, trying to get those last few rounds of the foot done. So. Let me switch back hands. So after the movies yesterday, I finally placed um, my marker, which of course I couldn't do in the dark in the movies. And so I've got my 20 rounds from day one. Yesterday I got a little more than 20 rounds, about 28 rounds done, which means I have um, like 18 rounds left to go to make a 65 round sock. So I'll be doing 18 rounds today. We'll see how much I can get done this morning. Oh, but I also wanted to talk about some math here. So this part, you know, the foot can be a slog. Um, and so I have some encouraging math for you. So think about this. If you knit a sock, one sock a week for a year, you could have 26 pairs of socks. But more realistically, we're doing eight days here, right? So if you knit one sock every eight days, 365 days is not divisible easily. So let's just do 360 days. Eight, uh, one sock every eight days for 360 days, you would have 45 socks, so like 22 and a half pairs, right? <laughs> and I'm totally kidding. Obviously, that would take some serious discipline, get super bored, but just think about the rate that we're running here. This is like a sprint, not a not necessarily like a marathon for the year. So you can do it. We have just two more days and I know you can do it. I did want to say that if you're loving this sock thing, I um, my actual plan <laughs> for knitting socks um, is not doing one sock a week because that's a lot. Um, my, my real plan that I try to stick to that I've done for the past two years is one, oh, sorry, a pair of socks every month. 
So the way that breaks down for me that I try to think about it is I do one sock every two weeks. So in a two week span, like the first week I would try to get, let's say I start at the cuff, I would try to get the cuff to the heel done and then the second week the foot and the toe done. Or if I've done a toe up sock, I'll do toe to heel or and then cuff, I don't know, it just, it just kind of depends. So basically half a sock per week and that's worked really well for me. It's totally doable even with other projects going on. The reason that it's doable is that socks are usually not something that I sit at home and work on. Socks are always my on the go knitting. So most of my sock knitting gets done in the car, at restaurants. I do usually bring them to work and work on them at lunch, um, but socks are rarely, I rarely knit on them at home. They're always my on the go knitting. So that's my little tip for you. If you wanna knit more socks, put them in a bag and take them with you. I'm so close to finishing my foot. I am, I need a half a round, but the problem is that I have just gotten to a new color. In fact, can you see, I'll show you in a second a little better, but um, that's a problem because I don't want to have like one little bit of the next stripe color and then do my contrasting heel because I have my gray for the contrasting of the heel and then, um, sorry, toe. I'm gonna do a contrast toe. Um, so let me show you what I'm gonna do. I'm actually going to add my contrast color early, but that doesn't mean I'm starting my toe decreases early. So I have a bit of a problem here. I need 65 rounds for my foot, 20, 40, 60, and I believe this is the fifth. One, two, three. Oh, see, it's only the fourth. One, two, three, four. So that's a bit of a problem because I have just made it to my next color change and I don't want to do a round and a half of this color and then start my toe decreases because as I start to decrease the stripe uh, length changes and I've already knit my other sock and it stops at this color. So what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to join this contrast color in early. I'm not going to start my decreases yet. Instead, I'm going to finish out the foot with this gray color. Now I'm a little bit finicky and you see that last stitch there. I really don't like, oops, you can hear toaster. I really don't like that that's in the um, next color. So I'm going to take it out and I'm just going to join in the contrast color at the very end. Sorry, he's barking. At the very end here. And then I'm gonna continue knitting with it until I have my 65 rounds for the foot. And then tomorrow, that's great because I've already got my contrast color in there for the toe. I'm all done for today. I am completely finished with the foot. That was such a long part of the journey. I thought I was never gonna make it. So tomorrow's the last day and all I have to do is the toe. And since I you know, met my stripe kind of earlier than my other sock, I um, already have my contrast color joined in. So it's just gonna be decreasing down to the toe from here. So tomorrow should go by pretty quickly. Um, as you can see, I stopped and I weighed my self-striping ball, my main color, and I still have 61 grams left. And I, this is actually my um, second sock. So that's really awesome that I was able to get away with like 40 grams of main color. Um, that's because I used, you know, contrast for the heel and the toe. Um, but I'm going to be making a, another pair of Shark in the Water socks during sock week, or I'm sorry, another sock, not another pair. <laughs> Oh my gosh. So I'm really glad I will have plenty of yarn to do that. So I am signing off for today. And even though it's not, it's six o'clock in the evening, so I'm not going to bed, but good night. I will see you tomorrow on day eight, the very last day. Good morning. Do you like my hair? I haven't combed it yet. I'm trying to show you different hairstyles throughout the week. 
I cannot believe that it is the last day, day eight. Just so crazy. So my goal today is to work the toe in my contrast gray color and then do the Kitchener stitch. So I'm gonna be working on that here this morning in just a bit once I comb out my hair and make some coffee and some breakfast. So I will catch up with you soon, probably to do the Kitchener stitch. I just finished doing the Kitchener stitch on my toe. Haven't done my ends in yet, but technically I'm done. I finished in the eight days. Um, you do not have to do this, but I'm gonna go ahead and weave my ends in and then we're gonna go give this a little bath. I thought you might be interested to see how I weave my ends in on socks. So that's one end that I've already woven in. So the first thing, <laughs> is to make sure that you are on the inside of your sock, of course, so I'm flipped inside out. Also to make sure that you are not on the bottom of the foot. So here's my heel. So this would all be the bottom of the foot. So I'm just making sure that I'm on the top of my foot here. Um, also making sure, man, these nails make these things hard to pick up. I have a pretty sharp needle here, or pretty small needle. It's not, I mean, it's not that sharp. Um, but it's one of these curved bent tip needles and it's metal. Um, I really prefer these. Um, there's some things I like the plastic needles for, but for socks, um, anything fingering weight really, I like these really small ones. So I'm gonna put my hand inside the sock so I can just have some tension. And then I'm gonna weave this end in. I'm not showing you that one because I don't know why I made that so short. I don't like them that short. I'll do that later. So first I kind of pull on things, make sure that stitch um, is nice and tight. And then I am going to be, um, essentially I'm going to go up, down, up um, as far as the stitches go, but I'm going to turn sideways because that's just more comfortable for me. So I'm actually going to be splitting stitches. I'm not going to go all the way underneath the stitch because that would show from the right side. Instead, I'm gonna use that sharp tip to split my stitches, and it just keeps it on the wrong side, plus it um, holds, it's a little stickier. So I'm gonna go through, that's just four, and then I'm gonna slide on through. And don't pull too tight, but you don't wanna scrunch it up. Okay, now I'm gonna go kind of a stitch next door, and I'm gonna go up or down or sideways, just the opposite direction. Making it like a Z, a zigzag, um, helps keep it from just sliding out. And then pull through. And then I don't think I'm gonna go right next door. I think I'm gonna skip over here. And I'm just splitting these stitches as I go. This last one, I might go a little further and then I am just going to cut my yarn. I'm not gonna cut it like right at the um, thing so it doesn't fall out, but as you wear it, that kind of frays and it won't bother you at all. So that's how I weave in my ends on many things, but definitely for socks.
I'm all done. I can't believe it. I'm so excited. Of course, I had to celebrate a little bit, so I'm having some chips and salsa. It's very good. Always be careful that you don't get salsa on your socks because that would be a tragedy. Um, but it's been such a week. I can't believe that I made it and you can totally do it too. So I'll see you really soon for sock week. We've made it to the end of the survival guide. I hope you were able to gather up some tips and tricks along the way and also see just how doable one sock in eight days can be. If you've chosen to go on this adventure with us, you are very brave, but you are not alone. There are so many resources and they are all linked down below. You can find frequently asked questions, the Ravelry group, patterns, videos, and more. I hope you guys are hyped and ready to knit those socks. Let the countdown begin to Sunday, July 28th, Sock Week 2019.